So it gives me the right to speak about policing, police culture, and first responders with such authority, especially in terms of mental health. I mentioned before, my dad was a police officer. My parents had five boys. Four of us became police officers. It's not uncommon for children first responders to want to follow in a parent's footsteps, but let me explain more. My dad was a Toronto police officer for 30 years. When he got hired in the 60s, it was called Metropolitan Toronto Police, or Metro for short. Some people still call it Metro. So this is how it usually works. My dad being a police officer, most of his friends were police officers. So every barbecue, weekend away, or get together, we were surrounded by other police officers and the conversation usually at some point revolved around policing. And of course, all the stories that came along with it. So naturally their kids, they were also exposed to it. And a lot of them wanted to become police officers. So again, the conversation revolved around policing in some way. I have so many memories when I was a kid, being brought to different police stations, meeting other police officers, uh, tagging along with my dad to court on certain days off. I went to the grand opening of the uh, ETF, the Emergency Task Force Station on Leslie Street back in the day, just off Leslie Street. And I went to the, uh, the grand opening of headquarters, Toronto Police Headquarters. All right, so here's kind of a funny story, and I almost shouldn't share it because it's so stereotypical. But back in the day, there was a lot more donut shops, okay? Not the big chains like there are today. There was a lot of mom and pop donut stores. And at one of these grand openings of a building, they needed some food, they needed some snacks because there was families coming by and everything else. One of the police officers went in with the truck and they bought the entire donut store out. They bought every single donut in the donut store. The guy closed up shop for the day. True story. So I mentioned the ETF, the Emergency Task Force. That's where my dad spent most of his career. And back then, back in the day, those were the tough guys. They had the best equipment, they had the biggest guns. A lot of officers really kind of looked up to them. They were always training. I went to the station, if they weren't in the gym working out, then they were training uh, in the field or different places around the building, going through scenarios and everything. They never stopped, but they loved it. Everything they did was to the extreme, and rightfully so. I mentioned before I was exposed to a lot of different uh, policing units and different types of police officers. So I saw the difference. And because it was my dad's lifestyle, I guess it naturally became part of my lifestyle. I shot my first firearm. I've been shooting since before I can even remember. I took martial arts. I was involved in all kinds of different things. I got in trouble as a youth, as a teenager. I mean, that's natural. A lot of police officers, kids do. Not uncommon at all. I mentioned already, my mom had five boys. Four of us became police officers. First was my older brother. It was something he always wanted to do. He was the first, growing up, he became a cop. Second was my younger brother. He became a cop. And then I became a cop. And then my fourth younger brother, he became a cop. The fifth boy, he became a doctor. He's a bit of an outcast. He thinks he's better than everybody else. So the conversations continued at home. At some point, the conversation would go into policing whether it was training or sharing different stories, things that happened to us. I mean, listen, I'm almost 50 years old. I've been exposed to policing and police culture my entire life. And so I gotta add this about first responders. A lot of the police officers we hung out were married to first responders or those affiliated to first responders in some way. So uh, dispatchers or call takers, paramedics, nurses. And listen, this is gonna bring some shame. I should admit this, but firefighters as well. Even when I got my badge handed to me by the chief of police, I was, of course, over the moon, very proud. But some of the other officers who graduated with me, their celebrations were so extravagant. And for me, it was almost like the natural next step in my life, which is actually kind of odd to me because growing up, I've mentioned this in the past, I never wanted to become a police officer. I had no plans of it. I'm a carpenter, I'm a licensed carpenter. And before joining the job, I got involved quite heavily with commercial real estate and commercial property management. And oddly enough, my father tried to talk me out of becoming a police officer. He didn't even think I should go for it. Didn't want me to get hired. And I'm gonna talk about that in another video. So what about police culture? Back to that. Again, I've mentioned I've been around it, exposed to it my entire life. And there's a lot of good with police culture. There's that brotherhood as it used to be referred to, the sisterhood or the sense of family that you feel no matter where you are, no matter where you travel and you talk to other police officers. There's that commitment to service, to serve others for the greater good. And listen, I don't care what organization tries to push this narrative. The majority of police officers out there everywhere go to work with pure intentions. They're honest and they want to do a very, very good job in the service of others. I believe that to the max and I'll fight for that. 
but I've also been exposed to the negative side of police culture. If not in my own family, then I witnessed it in the families of others. And listen, I say this, I give these examples with the utmost respect because it is a very, very hard job and it certainly takes a toll on you, but there is a negative side. Officers can slowly develop an us versus them mentality, which leads to a culture of distrust and animosity, and that also bleeds into their personal lives. It could lead to cynicism and burnout, but even on a more personal note, it could lead to uh, different forms of substance abuse, depression, domestic violence or abuse, and sadly, even suicide. Again, I've been exposed to this my entire life. But I am happy to say that things are slowly changing. There's been a push for change, both internally and externally. So within the service and outside the service, from uh, including a lot of current and former police officers, which is, of course, a good thing. But being constantly exposed to this my entire life caused me to take maybe a different approach to policing. I thought that there had to be a better way. When I got caught up in some of the negativity myself, that there had to be a better way. Or if not a better way, then a different way a different approach. There was a time when the criteria for hiring to become a police officer was very different. You could often get hired right out of high school if you met the height requirement, you were of good moral fiber, you had a relatively good command of the English language, and now we also know that that's changed. Now, whenever that topic comes up, I feel like I need to clarify something. I need to stick up for the cops. That hiring criteria I mentioned, listen, that's public knowledge. You can find that on the internet. However, there were people who were extremely educated before they got hired as police officers. And also, many officers continued to further their education while they were on the job, while they were police officers. And they rose into positions of uh, leadership. They rose up the ranks. And you know what? Very, very sharp individuals. So when it comes to policing and police culture, with my family background and being exposed to it my entire life, again, almost 50 years in a variety of different ways, I don't mind being so bold to say that maybe I do know a thing or two about policing, especially police culture. My outlook and my exposure to emergency services growing up might be very different than your outlook and your exposure to emergency services. And because of that, we may take a completely different approach. However, both of our approaches might be bang on. From what I understand, there are 16 personality types out there. We have different strengths, we have different weaknesses, and our experiences are obviously gonna dictate how we react to different situations. But also, they would dictate how we would enforce the law. I have so much more to say about this. I speak at conferences and events on a variety of different topics, including this, and I'm just getting started. So listen, Maybe you agree with what I said or disagree or you want to add to the conversation, please leave a comment. I've mentioned before, I read every single comment and I respond when it's appropriate to do so. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time. If you find my content helpful or useful in any way, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And until my next video, be safe out there, look after one another, and perhaps we will see you again.